Chris Allen. I'm the president and co-founder of Infrared 5, uh, and we've made a product called Red 5 Pro. Um, how many of you guys are developers or actually work in software? What we've actually built is a, uh, plat a platform for developers to be able to easily integrate um, live streaming into their applications, meaning that they can actually access the camera on a device like this or an Android device uh, and uh, be able to stream it with very low latency across the internet um, and connect to various other devices and other platforms. Uh, so what we've built is a server and um, a set of SDKs. Uh, SDKs are software development kits, for those that don't know that. Um, and they basically allow the developer to easily pop this into their own app. A lot of times people ask me, you know, how is this different than Skype um, or FaceTime or something? The difference is that you as a developer can actually integrate this into your own product and have it be much more of a seamless experience instead of having to jump out into another app where you don't control the experience. Um, so just to give you a couple of examples of things you can do with our platform, I, I didn't really even touch on the second screen aspect, um, but basically that means that we also provide local connectivity on a Wi-Fi network uh, to make things uh, basically no latency um, so that you can uh, turn your phone into a, a game controller. Um, for example, how we did that with uh, Brass Monkey. Uh, some of you guys might have known that um, product that we created as well. So one of the features, of course, is video chat. That's probably one of the most obvious things you can do with this platform. Um, the, the key thing here is to be able to take that video chat and record it uh, on, a, uh, on a server, for example. A lot of peer-to-peer -peer solutions, you can't actually do that type of thing. Um, we can also do live transcoding, uh, meaning that you can combine the streams into one uh, so that you can uh, save on bandwidth when you're streaming multiple things off to one client, for example. Um, and the, one of the other things that's pretty obvious too is a one-to-many feature. Um, this means that you can stream from one iOS device or an Android device, or maybe it's from Flash or from uh, soon WebRTC native in the browser, and then be able to broadcast to all these other devices. Now there are solutions for doing this today, you know, using CDNs like Akamai, um, but what they introduce is a lot of latency. Um, typically with an HLS stream, you're gonna get about five seconds, sometimes up to 10 seconds of latency. And anytime you wanna have some kind of live feedback, um, that becomes really problematic because you can't really have conversations if I'm talking to you and I have to wait for your response, right? It would drive you nuts. Um, this is so, sort of a buzzword, but the Internet of Things. Uh, I, but with that said, you know, even though Google Gla Glass just um, died <laughs> just last week, uh, we think that there's so many other devices that are going to involve screens or have cameras on them. The GoPro, I think, is a really good example of that, where people want to tap into those devices and be able to uh, stream and connect to them uh, in really interesting ways. So some of the use cases we've already been talking about um, and working with companies on are, are like using uh, a, a device that sits on somebody's helmet or something, and they're um, on a telephone pole repairing a unit but they're not necessarily the expert on this one thing so that they can have a live uh, teleconference with somebody else across the internet. Um, who is the expert, of course. Um, and then, you know, this second screen kind of experience. Now, I'm not gonna really get into this because there's so much to this, um, and I wanna show you guys a demo. Uh, but just imagine using your phone to interact with another TV or to become like a game controller. Um, for content on the browser. No, actually, I'm going to use this screen, so I'm good. Thank you. So, what I'm going to do really quick is just open up an app that we coded on my smartphone. I know you aren't going to be able to see it too much, but all I'm doing here is accessing the camera. You see, kind of camera view coming in. There it is. I hit this, and now I'm live streaming. If I refresh, if I refresh here, sorry, it's hard to talk into a mic while doing all this juggling. There we go. And you can see it running in the browser, live, over the internet. <laughs> Questions? Are you guys piggybacking off of some existing CDN? 
Are we piggybacking off of a CDN or an existing CD? No. Um, however, we did uh, originally write the um, software for the server called Red5, which is an open source um, implementation. We reverse engineered the streaming protocol for Flash back in 2005. And so we're actually leveraging that software. And in fact, these, uh, our, our, our server basically just includes a bunch of plugins that sit on top of the open source code that enable the like mobile uh, to mobile communication and then communicating to the other platforms. Um, and then, you know, kind of as a segue to the CDN, uh, you can cluster our servers and basically build your own CDN with uh, very low latency. Uh, we have one client right now that's doing online auctions. Um, where they can't have a, a, a bid be out of sync with the video that's happening, right? Um, so in that case, we, we're having to support a 300 millisecond latency um, uh, between the video uh, being broadcasted to the person subscribing to it. And so, um, and then that's also massively scaled to like 25,000 concurrent users, which is crazy. But Specific target users that really have adopted this in a way that you see all their, there's a need in, in the market that this is addressing. Yeah, so is there a need in the market that we're addressing right now and that we've seen specific users needing this stuff? Yes, absolutely. So we've been building uh, applications in Flash uh, using streaming uh, kind of software, like video chat applications, like the auction one that I described. And, and quite a few others that are looking for a way to get off of Flash because it's not supported on mobile. And there's really no easy to use solution for um, Android or iOS to actually quickly be able to build a live streaming app into your own application. So yeah, we're seeing a tremendous demand for this right now. So are you pretty much iPhone and uh, iPad based or the equivalent of Android? Yeah, we, we support Android, iOS, and yeah, and Flash is kind of a legacy, like on the desktop, to to be able to support that. That's what, where we're starting, and then we're going to be introducing WebRTC, which means that uh, you can do it native in a browser. Um, most of the major browsers support that now. But no way to, to connect a high quality video camera, for example. Oh, connecting to a high quality video camera. So yes, uh, because we do use a variant of RTSP and can actually um, take in various protocols. Uh, we can actually um, grab a camera feed from like an IP camera, uh, put it into the server and push it out to all the other clients. So yes, there's all kinds of ways to configure it. Um, and then you, you another know, one that I mentioned, the GoPro uh, thing, yeah, you can actually, your phone can actually become a hotspot and actually uh, target that uh, Wi-Fi network that the GoPro creates. And then we can actually consume that and push that out over uh, from that iPhone, for example, out over the internet as well. What's your business model? Oh yeah, what's the business model? That's an excellent question. Um, yeah, so we're licensing the, the software. Uh, basically, uh, for $55 a month, there is a developer, sorry, $55 per month per server that you run. Um, for larger uh, applications, you know, the, the you're gonna need massive scale. You know, obviously that's gonna, be clustered solutions. We can generally fit about a thousand concurrent streams on one server, um, but that really fluctuates depending on what you're doing with it. You know, like if you're doing really high quality video, it's gonna go down, and if you're just doing audio only or something like that, or just data streaming, it'll change. We just license the server, basically the software, the SDKs come with it. So you can use those. Um, that's kind of the way we decided to do it, just because it, we thought it was much easier than having to track you know, SDK usage and everything else. Uh, it's much easier to just track when servers are turned on and off. Um, and it, we also thought it was fairer to the user too, because it's like, you know, for a, a, we want people to be able to use this and when they're not at scale. And you know, it's pretty cheap to be able to pay $55 a month when you're under 1,000 concurrent users. Um, but you know, as you scale, then we start making more money. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>